Hi, Geminis. Welcome to January 2019. I cannot believe we are here. So I'm going to raise a glass. This is spicy ginger ale, just FYI. Um, I'm going to raise a glass to you guys. I'm going to do a little toast here. So to Geminis, you guys have been my best friends, my sounding boards, and the people that I can have the most complex uh, conversations with. Um, you all are the top people in my phone who always check in on me, who we are always there for each other. I appreciate your friendship, your ability to ask great questions and dive deep. And this is to a new year of new beginnings. Cheers to you. Okay, so I know a lot of gems had a really intense last third of the year. Um, a lot of you are getting pulled into new versions of yourself. Almost, in some cases, it's it feels as though it's completely non-voluntary. For other of you, it's it's very something that you've definitely wanted and, and been striving for and you're ready for. Regardless of how you're experiencing it, the last few months of 2018 were a time when that was really coming to meet you with a very vigorous energy. In fact, the note that I had for you is that there is this, this sense of, of change and you are in the woods and you are getting close to the next other side of the woods. This is the deep, dark wood. And you're getting tempted to maybe lose steam or get distracted or, or shut down. But this is that key point at which we have to check in even more. And I was, um, was rereading The Hobbit recently. I'm going to dork out a little bit here with you guys while I start shuffling. Four of Pentacles. Yeah. This comes up a lot when change is all around. I was reading The Hobbit. Fantastic book. Um, really fun if you're in a process of change. But one of the key parts of that is they go traveling through this wood. And he points out as he's writing about this that they were so close to the edge of this wood to getting the answers they needed to getting the clarity and they get distracted. They get distracted and they lose hope and that lack of mental clarity and, and just trusting gets them into a whole other series of events the sun. Now, of course, you know, even if they do get distracted and lost, in the end, it ends up being the thing that helps them out anyway. However, however, I like, I like that conversation. I thought it was useful. Um, I know some of my gems out there are just going through a really tough and intense time right now. Um, I'm sending you all my love. Um, some of my closest friends, like, I, yeah. Yeah, it's just been, it's, and that's not for all of you. Like I said, a lot of you, I think, are experiencing this transformation in a really positive, empowered, excited place. So it's really good to see that. So that, so everything is telling you you're a new version of yourself. Everything is saying we've got to go forward. And I think there's a lot of pressure with the new year to, to feel that. You know, Capricorn season for y'all is a really interesting time. And three cards like almost fell <laughs> out of my hands we have this eight of wands the nine of cups and the six of swords wow yeah yeah that about sums it up that about sums it up you guys um capricorn season is so powerful for gems it's your eighth house of transformation right we've just gone through sagittarius season which is all about relationship and now we're in this area of deep transformation that then moves into aquarius around the 20th of the month and leads us into the expansion of the ninth house. Uh, <laughs> but you have a lot of energy in, in your eighth house. You have Sun and Saturn go conjunct on the second. Mercury goes into Capricorn on the fifth. The new moon is in Capricorn on the sixth. Um, all of that's happening. So the first half of this month, it's a big focus on how you're ch changing, transitioning, transforming, growing, shifting, connecting in with the next version of yourself. Whoa. Three of swords, ten of wands. Yeah. This isn't all bad. Um, these cards have actually... Uh, January is turning out to be a really powerful month for taking a moment to sit with anywhere where you're holding yourself back with pain before you move forward. So we'll talk through this. Don't worry too much. 
you can see there's a nice mixture of positive forward motion and also integration. So we've got to have both. We've got to have both. Um, that, that, so there's all this 8th house transformational energy working with you and on you and around you. Yes. We also have this amazing final um, Leo full lunar eclipse on the 21st. It's the last lunar eclipse in Leo that we will have for many, many years. So it is closing out a cycle of connection. It's just a cycle energetically that has been working with us for quite a while, year and a half or so, almost two years. Page of Swords. And that's going to be really powerful as well, as long, along with this ninth house expansive energy starting to work with you. So you have things that are just kind of pushing you. Um, and the thing that I've been noticing with January 2019 is as we left the solstice in December 2018, we left behind all that retrograde energy that was like integration, slow down, and all of that um, heavier energy. And now we're in this new territory where it's like, oh, we got to move forward. And there's a little bit of wariness from everybody about that because it's getting used to a new way, getting used to a new way of moving through the world again after a time of major integration. So you're not alone with that four of wands. Beautiful. See, there's like a whole, there's a whole Mirkwood. You're in Mirkwood. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably not everybody is going to be as geeked out on that as I am, but um, there's a whole journey you're being taken through here, right? And I think part of the thing is that when we have to explore our depths or plumb our depths and we have to check in with some of these these scarier thought patterns that are with us, these these rooms in the house of our mind and our soul's energetic little pockets of pain, it can be a little scary to go there sometimes, page of cups. See, it starts to open up. There starts to be answers. We go in those pockets of pain. Part of what's scary about it is the sense that we are going to get stuck there or that that's going to become our reality if we have to look at it and engage with it. And it can if we decide we want to keep going there. But a lot of times it's more of just like a simulation that we are going in there to spend some time with it. So let's talk through these energies, my friends. Um, I'm going to look at these first three because speaking of simulations... And speaking of going into pockets of our mind that may or may not feel good to us, we started with the Four of Pentacles. Now, this card is an interesting one, right? Because it's it's resistance to change. And it's feeling like uh, you don't have the resources, the ability to handle the change. So you hold on to the things you have, thinking that will save you, be your life raft down the river. Uh, but it ends up being the thing that that imprisons you, right? It imprisons you as you clutch on. So this is a common thing that pops up when we are faced with newness and it keeps every morning we wake up and it's like, yep, you're still here in this new territory. You still have to wake up and go to that new job or learn that new skill set or, or face that you've lost somebody. You know, it's relentless. And it's like that, oh, I don't want to have to, right? So it's very natural to have this. However, that tensing up and that holding on is actually what's giving us more pain than if we just take a breath and trust ourselves, right? And you guys, I know, are some of the most playful, adventurous people I know. You're willing to make changes and make shifts and work around things. And the Sun and the Eight of Wands are all about that forward motion. This is what's so interesting about your reading today, you guys, is that you have this duality. And I, you know, I know everybody likes to say that about gems, but like truly, it's this funny thing of major resistance introspection and then forward motion, right? Clarity, movement. But here's the thing. I think that we can think about this in terms of how we move, how we think about how we move, right? This is that place of resistance. It doesn't feel so good. And here's that place of like life is a video game and we're playing in it and we're finding out what happens if we go through that door or go through that door. We find out what happens if we trust this process a little bit more and we open up. Now, as you release and as you let go of that, that stressed kind of pinched feeling, what also happens energetically is you create a channel for this kind of sunshiny energy to come in and give you the answers and the movement for the next stage. And I think that's the key here. I think that's the key here. I think that this... One thing you're going to notice this month is it's very responsive to your state of mind. <laughs> 
So if you're feeling really resistant and hold up, it's okay. Take a moment, sit with that, acknowledge it. You know, I always like to do the visualiz meditation visualization of you envision a house and you take your time, you know, with the outside, with the fountain, with the front door and you walk in and you find a room with a part of yourself that is feeling resistant and you sit with that part of yourself and you give that part of yourself a lot of love. That's a really great way to work with that energy. But it's very responsive. If you release that your answers come in, you start to get that pull, that playfulness showing up and moving with you. But there is this little bit of resistance. So there's kind of a duality going on here. You may be noticing that it takes some time to build and open these things. You can't just crack them open and be done, right? Because here's the other side. <laughs> that, that duality continues, my friends, because we have the nine of cups, the six of swords and the three of swords. And I'm just going to sit here with this for a second because, okay, these three all came out one after the other, right? Sun, eight of wands, nine of cups. These are about playfulness, movement, um, emotional support, freedom, um, ease, childlike trust, right? The easy, the good stuff in life, like love, relationships, fun, creativity and work, creativity and lifestyle. All the good stuff. And it's and it's easy and it's supportive of you and it's there. However, there's this other theme going on of past pain. Leaving behind. I think some of you are going through really hard breakups. And it could be emotional breakup. It can also be a breakup with a place, a career, an identity. Um, what I've been noticing about January in general, and not just with your sign, but with everybody, is this check-in with who they've been. And there is, and you know, we thought I thought this was all kind of getting resolved with the the solstice, but I'm noticing it's popping up in January. Um, and I think it's because there's so much forward motion. It's making us all want to retract back to who we've been. So there is grief here. There is a grieving here and there's a leaving behind here. Um, the way that I'm seeing it though is that in that grieving and that leaving behind, you're creating space for all that playful energy that we're seeing here mixed in with the resistance cards. Because like basically it's like resistance or, or receptivity are these two states. I mean, you could pretty much divide the tarot into those two. And so you're kind of getting an even hand of each, right? And I think that's okay. This is where calibration comes in. This is where you check in with, oh, that's a point of resistance. That's a point of discomfort. And check in with, oh, that's a point of ease. That's a point of joy. That's a point of connection. The other thing I'm noticing with this is, once again, you are going to want to manhandle the energies and, and, and be in charge of your transformation, which, yes, you are. You know, you're a conscious being. You get to be in charge of how that plays out. However, how, I mean, you get to be in charge of taking action and, and thinking good thoughts and asking for what you really want. However, the way that's delivered takes some time. And if you're feeling nervous about that timing, you're going to feel resistant. You're going to feel scared. You're going to feel that it's not going to work out, that it's, that it's going to tear at you or hurt you, right? So I'm kind of noticing that with you guys, that a lot of this is just feeling distrustful of the situation or how it's going to play out. Um, now, here's the thing. We get out of Mirkwood, right? We get to the other side of the woods. The Ten of Wands is a closeout of some of that heavier energy working with you. And the Ten of Wands is a closeout, right? So for me, that's closing out a lot of this resistance energy that we see earlier in the month and opening up to the next phase. So there is a way through here. There are answers coming through here. It's just taking a moment to fully coalesce, right? It's taking a moment to make sense. Now, when Ten of Wands shows up, try not to take everything on your shoulders. I think you're going to want to get to, into problem solving mode. You're going to want to take on other people's processes with you. You're going to want to help other people solve a problem. If you're going through something hard, if you're trying to understand another person, you may feel that if you can just engage them in conversation or connect with them, that somehow that's going to help everything out. However, don't hold that on your shoulders. Everybody's kind of 
calibrating to 2019 and to the energies that are working. It's kind of one of these months where a lot's moving. There's a lot of dialogue, but there's also these deeper threads going on pretty intensely. Now, if you're willing to kind of take your foot off that gas pedal and take a breath, trust a little bit. Look what happens here at the end of the month. I mean, page of cups too. Page, page of swords, four of wands, page of cups. Clarity. <sighs> we can breathe. You know, we can see, we are getting the information, we're getting the communication we've been after this whole time, right? We're getting the commitments and the celebration. We're getting the, the preferring of, uh, of some kind of profession, right? These are very communicative about feelings and professions of feelings and exchanging that information. And this is very celebratory commitment energy, right? So these are about, this is about getting answers and feeling that clarity and feeling that crispness again. After we had to navigate, quite honestly, pretty complex, a pretty complex palette of energies that you have going on for a good chunk of this month. I have to say, you guys, even I, and I'm sure many of you sitting there will understand what these things are, right? Because it is it is complex. You know, what works for us, what's going to make us happiest in the long run, what's painful now but then will end up being very good for us later on is a very nuanced thing. And often while we're in the midst of these things pulling at us, we can't even say for certain what is serving us and how it's going to serve us down the line. So things that we're losing, things that we're gaining, how is it going to play out? We don't know. So the best thing I can say with this kind of energy working with you Geminis is to try and get out of your analytical mind as much as possible and to breathe and um, take those times. And this is also a month, you know, this is master level stuff that we're all working toward throughout life. This practice of noticing when you get into the self-defeating thought processes, noticing when you're getting into that self-shutdown, self-censoring place and pivoting into those warmer thoughts. What an amazing practice. And as you're doing that, it helps you navigate. It helps you focus on where you should be focusing your energy. There could be a temptation to focus your energy on the, the things that are heavy, the things that are holding you, the things that are in the past, or the things that you feel you need to problem solve your way out of. However, what I'm noticing is there are these other elements that are working with you that are that, that don't require you carrying the weight and the burden but in fact feel warm and light and bright and easy and, and flowing and kind of noticing what things what practices whether they're just in your day-to-day -day or their relationships or in life plans feel like the Sun and the eight of wands and the nine of cups and what feels like the Three of Swords and the Six of Swords and the Four of Pentacles, you know, um, and the Ten of Wands. What feels like communication and ease and flow and commitment and what feels like heaviness? These are questions you will probably need to be asking yourself a lot because so much is moving. All the gears are shifting. And when we have that much movement, it's that much more important that our practices reflect that and then we act in a way that reflects what we need. Um, stay the course. There are answers at the end of that tunnel. I have a little affirmation for you guys for January 2019. So you can check in with yourselves uh, throughout the month and this is what it is. I trust the changes coming into my life. I know they are bringing me into a place of happiness, well-being, and bright new beginnings. That trust is crucial to an overall state of well-being. Um, I love you guys. I know you want to problem solve and take on the world's problems and take it all on your shoulders, but you don't have to. I think that's really important. Everybody's kind of going through their process, and you are as well. We have to let January breathe and aerate like a great bottle of wine to kind of understand what it's bringing us. And the less we try and curate it, the more it will bring us. That's kind of a theme I'm noticing. Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at the Sarah Tarot. I would love to see you over there. You can also get the Year Ahead Forecasts on Vimeo. I will leave the link below for you guys. And then of course you can book a private reading with me. I do those over Skype and I have um, my calendar and all my booking is 
done through my website, which is saratarot.com. I will leave all the information about how to find me, how to connect with me in the description box so that you can just go down there and find all that info. I'm sending you guys all my love. I am so excited for 2019, being here with you guys, making a whole bunch of new exciting materials, and it's going to be an amazing year. So trust in that. I know the cards are a little complex today, but that's kind of what January is all about, I'm finding. So um, I love you guys and I will talk to you soon.